Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and today I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity to talk about two radios that are quite popular at the moment and um, are often compared against each other. There's a few reasons they're compared against each other. Um, mainly they have similar numbers in the Sherwood Engineering Receiver Performance Testing, they're in the same sort of price bracket, and they're of similar size. But if you go beyond those three factors, they're actually vastly different radios, and you really do need to um, play with both of them to decide which one is more useful for you. Now, the first factor I want to mention is the IC7300 is significantly lighter than the Kenwood TS590SG. Yeah, I can do this with ease, but to pick this up, actually requires a bit of effort, you know, you, I'm, I'm shaking doing that. So I don't know the exact figure in pounds or kilos, but this is a substantially lighter radio and it's also physically smaller. Um, the cost of course for that is you've got less buttons on the front, um, but uh, you know, otherwise the SDR technology has really reduced the weight of the IC7300. Now, the other difference that's quite immediate is the fact that the IC7300, being an SDR at a box radio, has the um, large LCD screen. I believe it's somewhere in the order of 4 inches or so, maybe 4.3, and it has the band scope and the waterfall. Now, the Kenwood TS590 SG doesn't have that feature. It's just got the usual sort of display you'd see on a radio. It's got the frequency on it. Um, the signal strength meter, all that sort of stuff that you'd see on a traditional super het radio. Um, but, you know, the IC7300 has a band scope. And that was one of its biggest selling points, I think, is that it was the first radio that you could just plug in, turn on, and, um, you know, you had a beautiful band scope, you had beautiful sounding audio, um, and you have a lot of features. For, for you, there's a lot for the money you spend. It actually came with a lot of features. Um, one of the one big feature that wasn't in its price class before was um, voice recording. Not only can you record the QSO you're having, um, but you can also record voice loops such as CQ CQ contest and and that sort of thing. So, you know that was a first for the price class. The Kenwood TS five ninety SG does offer that. But you need to buy the um, VGS module, um, and you know that's a you know hundred or hundred and fifty or whatever it is, you know a couple hundred dollar option. So that was built into this radio, and not only that, the seventy three hundred was a very cheap radio when it was released. You could get it on special for just over a thousand US dollars, um, if not a little bit cheaper, and it really did do everything you could think of. It has good filtering, um, it had the built-in pan adapter. Basically, for a starter shack, it's a brilliant radio. Um, the only thing, only downside, I guess I'd say to, to this radio is that I don't personally think it's great for, you know, um, the expedition use in that unlike the 7200, the model before it, it's not particularly doesn't seem particularly rugged. Um, it, the 7200 was plasticized, it had a uh, uh, weatherproof ceiling in it and all that sort of thing that this doesn't have. So um, that's not, this isn't a replacement for the 7200 and that um, is on sale. Now, another thing both of these radios have, which is quite great, is they've both got USB connectivity on the back um, with audio and cat control, so or, or sieve control, so you can plug your computer into them and use them with digital mode straight away. Um, that's a great advantage, and once again, something that hasn't been seen in this price class that often. Um, the ASUS in this price class, you need to buy an external box for, and you know some of them even have a USB connector. ASU just refused to offer the audio input function, so I think that was really quite disgusting on the ASUS behalf, but with either of these you, you can do that. Now, I guess I've talked about how this has a pan adapter and how that's a, a big win for it and how it has things as standard that radios previously didn't have. Um, 
being an SDR, the SDR uh, filtering and the, the twin passband, which I believe is, no, that's the multi, the twin passband tuning knob here um, is quite good. But there are a few limitations, I suppose, to this radio. And that's where it sort of becomes a little bit more obvious. Um, well, one, if you look at, look at the radios um, at the front, You'll see the, the TS590SG has a lot more knobs and the, a lot of the features are within reach of either turning a knob or holding a button down or even just pressing a button. Nothing you, nothing you need to do in the 590SG is more than really one step away. Uh, you either, as I said, you either push a button, push and hold a button or turn a knob. Everything can be done straight away. And in that regard, I think it has a bit of an advantage over the 7300 in that you have to go into menus to do some things in the 7300, like set your notch um, width and, and, and those sort of things. So, um, or set up your voice recordings or, um, you know, similar things like that. So it is, it is more menu driven, but it does mean that in the heat of the moment, maybe when you're chasing a de-expedition or you're in a contest, um, it's a little bit slower to operate. So do you need to do these things with this radio? Generally speaking, no. Um, I find that my brain um, is as good as a DSP as I need. And I, I just, I use the RF gain control, I use the attenuator, and that's basically all I use. Um, I, I set my um, my uh, receive bandwidth to about three kilohertz, and my brain just you know it pulls the signal out of the noise. So I don't find I have to play with all the options, um, you know, in the heat of the moment. But this radio does offer that capability, whereas this one doesn't really. So you know, if it's kind of like thinking about um, you know, this is. Uh, despite being small, this is sort of like a, a very good small car, like maybe a Mercedes uh, small car, whereas this is more like a sports car. You know, it's a little bit raw, you've got all those options there, um, but you sort of have to work it a little bit more uh, to get the same same result. Um, you can leave the, thing, the, the settings alone, I'm sure a lot of people do, um, but, you know, to get the most out of it, it does need to be played with. That's that's the whole sort of point of this this radio. It really is a a, a button and a knob fiddler's dream. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about really concerns the back of the radios. So I'll just turn them around. Now, the IC seventy three hundred. Um, has one antenna input. That's a little bit of a letdown in my regard, but at the same time, this is an entry-level transceiver. And, you know, for someone who maybe is renting an apartment or moving their shack or, um, you know, doesn't have a big, a big setup, it's not necessarily a problem. Now, a lot of people who run linear amplifiers, um, they have their radio, or their exciter plugged straight into their amplifier. You don't need more than one antenna socket, but it does limit your ability to maybe experiment a little bit. Um, easily flick between two antennas at the, at, um, at the touch of a button, for example. So um, that is one sort of downside on this radio. Now you'll note that the 590SG, I'll just look for them, um, has two antenna sockets. They're both transmit and receive. So you could have one, for instance, connected to your HF setup, another connected to your six meter setup. So there's a little bit more flexibility here. You've also got the option of a, I believe it's down the bottom here, it is a receive only antenna. So, um, you know, the, in terms of what you can connect up to the radio, the TS590SG is it is in a different class. This is more comparable to an ICOM 7610, which also has similar functionality. So, um, you know, it, it sort of comes down to, I guess, in a sense, as to which you would buy. Do you, are you more of an experimenter or do you just want to get on the air and enjoy being on the air? Um, and that's, 
sort of how I see it. Um, now, one thing I will say in favour of the 590SG is it has an option here called the drive port. Now, the drive port can be used to drive a transverter, um, which is something you can't, e can't easily do on a 7300. Um, you know, for instance, this has in its software the ability to display the transverter's frequency on the, on the main screen and things like that. But more to the point, you can actually change the functionality of the drive connector to be an antenna splitter. And just like the little um, uh, mini circuits unit that I use for doing receiver comparisons, um, the antenna splitter built into this radio uh, you know, works really, really well. So if you actually want a waterfall and a band scope, you can plug something like an SDR play into the back of this radio and have a full size band scope on your computer screen. So in that regard, um, even though the 7300, you know, does have that, that band scope uh, ready to go on the screen, um, if, you're, if you're not so worried about that, if you're not worried about the fact you have to have a computer and boot it up and maybe spend $200 extra on an SDR play, you can have a better band scope and an actual second receiver uh, with, with this radio, which is a really cool f um, feature. Now, you don't even have to connect up a, um, an SDR play, for example. You could plug that drive connector into the back of this radio and have the 7300 as your second receiver. So this radio has, I guess, a lot more flexibility in what you can do with it. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. Are you an experimenter? Or are you just looking to get on the HF bands and, you know, really enjoy them without too much fuss? Um, if you want to get on the HF bands and have a fantastic experience, you know, have essentially a radio that delivers 90 to 95% of what a top class radio delivers, the seven, you know, for, for peanuts, for, you know, uh, around a thousand US dollars. Um, the 7300 is the way to go. Now, if you've got, if you're more of an experimenter and you've got maybe you're into six meters as well as HF, you don't want to have, a, you know, a, an external antenna switch, or you you have one but you want to be able to switch at the, you know, press of a button maybe for switching between your vertical or your dipole, or whatever. Um, this, this radio offers that capability. So I guess that's what I'm getting at, is that this is more of an experimenter's radio, a traditional HF radio with some extra functionality. It does cost more. There's a good reason for it costing more because it does have those things like the two antenna in inputs and that sort of thing. And the, um, the receiver, the antenna splitter output for driving a second receiver. Um, so that's what it really comes down to. What are you going to do with, what are you doing with your shack? Where are you in your ham career? Um, if you're buying your first HF radio, undeniably, this is the way to go. It just delivers everything and it delivers it well. Um, if you're maybe, maybe looking to replace an older rig, you've already got a shack computer set up, maybe you've already got an SDR dongle or something, seriously consider the TS590SG. It does give you some of the flexibility that you'd only find in the ICOM 7610, which costs probably two and a half times as much. So in that regard, uh, if you're willing to have to boot up a computer for your, ST, for your uh, pan adapter, your band scope and your um, waterfall, you can have essentially all of the 7610's functionality in the 590SG. And the receiver performance is for all intents and purposes, good enough. Um, plus, you've got all the extra buttons. This actually has more buttons than the this, um, 7610. Now, some people might say, well, what do they sound like? The fact of the matter is they're both great sounding radios. And, you know, when, when making these purchasing decisions, you don't want to make them based on, on, um, on one feature alone. Now, I saw a great video by another YouTuber, Jack, and he, he goes, it's a mock-up of people saying, um, you know, I should buy a, a, a transceiver based on uh, whether it has the best sensitivity. And um, 
anyway, in Jack's mock-up, he talks about going into a car dealership and saying, I want one of five cars because they're on the, the top steering wheel list. <laughs> and, you know, that's, um, that's sort of why I've sort of strayed away from doing a, a straight comparison on these two with, say, audio or um, a specific function, any one specific aspect of the radio, such as the pan adapter or anything like that, because they've, they are vastly different in, in what they deliver and who their target audiences are. And I don't think you can pick the wrong one as long as you pick the right one for yourself. Um, and that's where, you know, it, it's important to understand the differences. It even goes as far as simple things like to, to connect up a linear amplifier this radio doesn't have the usual RCA connector um, for ALC and send uh, or transmit for your linear amplifier. You actually have to wire it up to a, um, a remote. It's like a, a DIN plug. Now, um, if you don't own a shack with a soldering line and that sort of thing, that's going to be a pain in the butt if you're not comfortable doing those sort of things. This radio it readily fits into your shack. This radio, as I said, it's for experimenters. You may have to, you know, bust out the soldering iron to connect something up the way you want to. This afternoon, I had to go and solder an RCA connector to a um, SMA connector using some LL195 um, coax. So I could connect up the SDR play. Now, you do have to do those sort of things with this radio. Um, but, as I said, you get rewarded by having a little bit more flexibility and everything at the touch of a button. This radio, it's simple, it'll fit into your shack, but you may have to dig into a menu or two. So basically, that's the two different radios. Um, I'm probably not going to do an, an on-air test of the two, mainly because I wouldn't encourage someone to purchase them based on how they sound on YouTube. I think YouTube doesn't give you the most realistic um, sound of a radio, and you know, you definitely, I'd encourage people who are on the fence to go to go into the shop and play with them both because one of them will, will stand out to you as being the right radio for you and there isn't a wrong choice. So I hope you've enjoyed this overview and um, stay tuned for more. Um, this is Jared of VK3BL saying 73 for Rate My Radio.